Hey Russell fam, in today's video, I'm going to share with you the top 10 questions that I get asked as a homeschooling mom. Be back in just a second. Hi, my name is Becky and welcome to our Russell's Loving Life YouTube channel. Here on this channel, we talk about homeschooling and homemaking and everything in between. I am a homeschooling mom of two, and I have been homeschooling since 2012. We also have a blog, which is russellslovinglife.com. There, I give you tips and tricks that I have learned through my years of homeschooling. If you love this content, please consider subscribing and clicking that little bell notification down at the bottom. That just lets you know every time I upload a new video, and that lets me know that you are liking this content that I am putting out. And if you are a returning Russell fam, we are so glad you are back. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the top 10 questions I get asked by mamas, daddies, families that are wanting to know more about homeschooling because they are considering homeschooling with everything that is going on right now in the world. So I wrote them down because I wanted to make sure I covered the top 10 that I get asked. So number one is how much does it cost? That is always the number one question. Um, number two is how can I work and homeschool? Number three is, is it legal to homeschool? Number four, does it have to be accredited? Number five, how will my children perform? Number six, how to homeschool kids with special needs? Number seven, what are the benefits of homeschooling? Number eight is, is homeschooling all religious based? Number nine, how does testing work? Number 10, um, what about extracurricular activities, sports, those type things? So let's get into answering these questions. Like I said, the number one question I always get asked is how much does it cost? That depends on you. You can spend as little as you want or as much as you want. Um, Easy Peasy All in One is an online curriculum that is free. So if you are looking into homeschooling, I would start with that one if you're looking for a free curriculum. Now, like I said, homeschooling curriculums can cost as much or as little as you want. I use my father's world and depending on the grade level, it can be anywhere from $300 to $600 is kind of the range there. Um, I have been using my father's world since my oldest is a sixth grader now, um, was in kindergarten and I have reused my father's world kindergarten and currently using first grade with my first grader. So I love my father's world. That is the curriculum we use, but just know that homeschooling does not have to cost an arm and a leg. Now, if you are looking at a Becca curriculum, it's a great curriculum. I've heard great things about it. I have not used it, but I know that is one of the most expensive curriculums out there. So you don't have to spend an arm and a leg. Um, I use the box curriculum, which is the My Father's World, but you don't have to use those. Um, there are curriculums that you can piece together out there um, that you want. You can get you know, the English from here, the history from here, you piece it together and do unit studies where you just find a history and you take everything and build off of that history curriculum. You can get spelling from there. Um, so it's not an exact amount of how much it costs when you are homeschooling. So just know that. And um, the box curriculums work for me. They don't work for some people. So you just have to figure out what works for you. And there are also ways to find um, used curriculums. A lot of homeschool parents um, contact the homeschool groups in the area. If you don't know how to do that, check with your library because more than likely they will know of homeschool groups in your area. Um, and once a year, there is typically a homeschool sale 
where they sell curriculums that they have not used or curriculums they've used and just not written in the books or if they've written in them it wasn't very much so used curriculums are amazing so that is one way to cut down on cost the second one is how to work in homeschool well with everything going on right now with schools in session virtual distance whatever it is you are homeschooling in a way but you're not homeschooling um, when you are doing distance or virtual learning yes you're doing school at home but the teacher is telling you what you need to teach your children when you're homeschooling you get to decide what your children are learning when they learn it how they learn it that type of thing so when it comes to working and homeschooling a lot of parents do what they call night schooling and i have written a blog on that and i will leave a link to that article down in the description box but it can be done it is where parents work during the day and they homeschool their children at night whether it is with one parent or both parents or one parent works during the day one parent works at night that type thing um, you just figure out what works for you but homeschooling and working full-time can be done you may have to do some of it on the weekends like i said at night um, early in the morning and then take a break and then come back to it but working full-time and homeschooling can be done you just have to be creative and make it fit into your schedule that is one of the best things about homeschooling it is it is so flexible it's not a nine to five thing that you have to do for homeschooling i mean seriously my first grader her schooling takes an hour at the max and when i'm homeschooling my sixth grader his max is four hours so theoretically when we get up in the morning if we get up at say 7 30 we're done with breakfast by eight and we start we're done by lunchtime so it's not like you have to teach your children from 8 a.m to 3 p.m once they're done with a subject or they master that skill for the day you're done with it they don't have to sit there and do a bunch of busy work so a lot of public and private school parents think they have to teach their children from 8 a.m to 3 p.m but you don't homeschooling you come up with a schedule you figure out what you want to do we currently do a four day um, school week so i may homeschool monday through thursday and friday is what we call fun fridays where we do field trips we haven't been able to but typically we do field trips do fun things with our friends or if i have doctor's appointments or the kids have doctor's appointments we can juggle things around so we are not stuck to a specific day time anything like that so you can homeschool and work full-time number three is is it legal to homeschool and the answer to that is yes it is legal to homeschool in all 50 states um, i have written an article on my blog i'll leave a link to that down in the description box as well it's called what is a homeschool friendly state um, and basically here in mississippi we are considered a homeschool friendly state all we have to do is register once a year with our attendance officer and that's all we have to do here in mississippi so some states i know um, when it comes to homeschooling they require a parent to have a high school diploma or a ged um, so always go to the homeschool legal defense association and check out their website they have all of that up to date on what is required to homeschool in your state so if you are wanting to know about homeschooling that is the best resource i have found it's homeschool legal defense association so check them out they are amazing so you just have to go by the guidelines that your state requires you to do some states require you to have an evaluation where someone comes in and looks at your work that your child has done over the years some states require you to take a standardized testing so every state is different there's no set standard when it comes to a state homeschooling so you just have to figure out the homeschool laws 
in your state to make sure you abide by them. Now, I know, um, I think New York is one of the toughest. Um, and what I mean by toughest is that it has a lot of stricter laws, requirements, regulations, but there are so many parents that are homeschooling. So don't let that deter you from homeschooling, but make sure you know what your laws are and make sure you follow them to the T. Like I said, here in Mississippi, all we are required to do is to register once a year with our homeschool, or with our attendance officer, and that is for first graders through 12th graders. If you're in kindergarten, you don't have to sign them up. Um, I'm not required to keep any of their work, but I keep everything. Um, a lot of it is because Becca is going to use the exact same curriculums that Bailey is using. So I have all the books. Um, so I just keep it all, but I also grade them on their spelling test, Bible test, math test, grammar test. So they take tests, they get grades on them. I have a grade book and I keep up with everything just to show if something changes during their homeschooling years and that I have to provide something, I can go back to first grade and say, okay, here are the spelling grades or here's the spelling test that they took. So I know it's probably overkill. I know it's probably keeping too much, but I don't know what is going to change through their homeschooling years. And I just want to be prepared and they have everything they need that is required of them. Question number four is, does your homeschool have to be accredited? It does not here in the state of Mississippi. Now, I know if you take the Abeka route, they are accredited. They do graduations and all of that. But our homeschool group also does graduations and we're not accredited. So we are just have to file, follow the same rules and regulations that all homeschool all high school children have to do is where they have to take the ACT or the SAT to get into college. And I have to provide a high school transcript um, of the classes they've taken, of the grades they've made. And that's what I have to do here in Mississippi. So you do not have to have an accredited co a course or homeschool curriculum unless you just feel that that's what you need and that would work what is what would work best for your family. Can't get that out. I am so sorry. So if you feel like being accredited is something that is holding you back, don't let it hold you back because if you follow your state laws, most states do not require you to follow an accreditation or have any form of accreditation. Question number five is how will my children perform in a homeschooling environment? Well, that just depends on you and that depends on your child. Every child is different. Every child has a different learning style. Every parent has a different teaching style. So there is no way to exactly tell you how your child is gonna perform. Now, let me tell you, if you are coming from a public or a private school, there is a transitional period, which is pretty much called de-schooling. And if you're not familiar with that, it is where your child is having to learn how to switch from being in such a structured, strict environment in a public or private school to the laid back homeschool setting at home. And I will leave a link down in the description box below on um, some tips that I give you on how to de-school your child. It's one of my blog posts that I have written and parents and teachers. I know a lot of homeschool moms that were public and private school teachers that have come home to teach their children. They have said that they had to go through the de-schooling process. It wasn't just their children, it was them because they have followed so many rules and regulations that they had to do as teachers for so many years. And now they don't have to do that at home. They can be more laid back. They can be more spontaneous. They can be more flexible. So there's a way that you've just got to ease into it and don't stress out. Don't stress your child out. If something's not working, then just take a break. It's okay. Take a five minute break, um, ease into it. Do a little bit the first day, do a little bit more the second day, um, snuggle up and read a book, take field trips, 
go explore some nature. Just kind of ease into it. And if you put your child at the kitchen table or wherever your homeschool room is and say, okay, we're doing school and that's how it is, your child is not going to perform that well if they're switching over. But if they've been homeschooling, they're gonna perform fine. So just know that there's a transitional period and you've got to learn your child's learning styles and you have to learn your teaching style. Now I have learned over the years that both of my children have my learning style. We learn in a spiral and that's how I learned when I was in school. Um, it worked best for me. I would work on something and I would get it and then I would move to something else and then I would come back to that just to keep it fresh in my mind and keep reminding me on how to do it. So that is called the spiral method. Now we use Saxon math and it has the spiral approach. They will teach you um, some problems, some methods for that day. And then you get over to the next section and they hit on problems that you've done in the last four or five days. So they're coming back just to keep it fresh in your mind and you're building and it's a spiral approach. So just know when it comes to your child performing, it just depends on their background. It depends on a lot of different things. So don't get frustrated. Don't get aggravated. If you set them down at the table the first week and it's not all roses, because let me tell you, homeschooling is not always a bed of roses. We have our good days, we have our bad days, our kids have good days, our kids have bad days, and just know that is gonna happen. And when that happens, just take a break. Get up from the table, get up from wherever you are, and switch to something else. Take a snack break, um, take a water break, take a lunch break, go outside and run around and have some fun for 30 minutes and come back in and do some more schoolwork. But just know your child and you will eventually figure out what is best. Question number six that I get asked a lot is how do I homeschool my child with special needs? Well, there are so many mamas out there that have children with special needs that have YouTube channels that are there to support you and show you what they are doing with theirs. Now, I know Katie in the life of the mundane she has an amazing channel where her children have some special needs and she just shares with you resources that work great for her. And Leilani at Living with Eve has a preschooler with Down syndrome and she shares her homeschool tricks and things that she does and she's homeschooling four children. Not all of them have special needs, but one does. So there are lots of YouTube channels out there. I will leave a link to both of their channels down in the description box as well. But just know that if your child has special needs, you can homeschool them. Um, I remember I have a brother with special needs and we weren't homeschooled, but he's hearing impaired and has a list of, of issues, um, disabilities and things like that. But I remember my mom sitting down in his room and everything had pictures, everything had words, um, and he was deaf, so she wanted him to be oral instead of signing. So they would spend so many days just sitting on the floor and she would hold up a card and cover her mouth and she would say the word and he would have to listen to it and tell her what the word was. And this was back in 1985. So, you know, things have come a long way since then. But as a parent, I don't have children with special needs, but I know watching my mom um, and my brother now, with him having special needs, that things have to be changed a little bit. Just because it works one way for one child doesn't mean it's gonna work this way for yours. So you just figure out what works best for your child. Um, if your child has been in public and private schools, you usually have IEPs that you have been to and your teachers, the teachers have told you what your child needs, what they need to work on, things they're doing to help with them. Um, if they're going to OT or PT or any of that kind of stuff, that can be included in your homeschool. So if your child does have special needs, do not let that stop you from homeschooling because it can 
be done. You are their parent. You know what is best for your child. So make sure that does not stop you from homeschooling if that is something you want to do. Question number seven is what are the benefits of homeschooling my child? Well, there are so many benefits. Now, I know when I went to public school that I had to sit there and wait for everybody to get done. Well, when you're homeschooling, when your child is done with their work, they're done. Then you get to move on to something else. So that's one of the benefits. Another benefit is the flexibility. Now, we are a year-round homeschooling family. And basically what that means is we homeschool all year round. Um, here in Mississippi, the summers are hot. So, you know, we just do school. Um, we typically start our school year the end of September and we are typically done by the end of July and we'll take off August and September. And if that doesn't happen, then that's fine. But we take off a lot in the fall for all of the holidays, you know, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas. Um, when we need a break, we take a break. If I have a busy, hectic week of some things that are coming up with a bunch of doctor's appointments, or if the kids have tournaments or things that they need to get ready for, then we just take a break. So that is why we are year-round homeschoolers. And check with your state um, to see what your laws are on homeschooling, because I know some states are required to start on a certain day and some states are required to end on a certain day. So make sure you check those out. So one of the benefits is the flexibility. Um, another one is you get to work one-on-one -on -one with your child. So if you are working on math and you see that your child is not getting what they're needing to comprehend from that lesson, then you can break it down to the way they can understand it. You can spend a little longer on it and get them to the point that they're learning what they need. You're not in a rush. You're not in a hurry. You just sit there and take the time to get it done with them. Another benefit is I am currently working on uh, teaching my sixth grader to work independently. Now, with there being five years between my children, it's kind of hard to teach them the same curriculums at the same time. We do Bible together but trying to do science and history together as a family, I've tried it and it just isn't, wasn't working for us. So I basically teach two different curriculums to my children and we do Bible and read aloud together. But the benefit is you get to do what works best for your child. So since I am teaching my sixth grader to work independently, that allows me more one-on-one -on -one time to work with my first grader. And so my son will be over here working on something and reading it and doing his worksheets and doing the work. And if he has questions, he'll come ask me and that's perfectly fine. But I am teaching him to learn how to learn on his own. So no matter how old he is, he will always know where to go and what to do and how to find answers on his own with all, without being um, expecting someone to give him the answers. He knows where to go find those answers. So teaching him to be independent and be an independent learner is another great benefit of homeschooling. So those are just a few of the benefits, but to me, there are so many benefits out there to homeschooling. So if you're scared that there's not benefits for homeschooling, there are a bunch. Number eight is, are all homeschool curriculums religious based? No, they are not. We use My Father's World, which is a um, Christian based curriculum, but there are some of them out there that are not Christian based. There are secular ones out there. So if that is what is holding you up about homeschooling is don't let that be the thing to hold you up. All you have to do is do some research to look for secular homeschool curriculums. And there are some of them out there. Even some of them have Bible or secular. They give you the option. So if that is what is holding you up, don't let that hold you up because there is an option for it to be 
Christian-based or secular. Number nine is how does testing work? Well, it depends on which testing you are talking about. As a homeschooling mom, I test my children weekly or whenever the curriculum tells me to test them. Um, for our math on Saxon math, every five lessons, there's a test. So that's usually once a week that there is a math test. Every week there's a Bible verse they have to learn and there is um, a spelling test every week. So every week my children at least have three tests. Now, depending on the grammar, um, we use Growing with Grammar and it'll tell me to test them about halfway through the chapter and then at the end of the chapter. So it just kind of depends on where it goes on that. When it comes to standardized testing, that depends on your state. Now, I know some states require um, elementary and middle school and high school children to take certain standardized, standardized benchmark tests. Um, so know your homeschool laws on that. You can go to the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Um, they have a website, check them out, and they can tell you what laws are required in your state when it comes to testing. Now, if you are talking about testing for college, all uh, I know here in Mississippi, and I think most states require either the SAT or the ACT, um, they have to take those tests to go into college. Um, I do know that some homeschool parents do not test their, their elementary or middle school children. They start testing them once they get into um, junior high or high school, but that depends on you. Like, like I said, here in Mississippi, I'm not required to do any form of testing, but I do test them here at home. We're not required to do standardized testings. And finally, question number 10 is about extracurricular activities. Now, I know there are some states that have the Tim Tebow rule or law where children can, homeschool children can participate um, in sports with their local um, middle school, high school, um, that is something you have to check into with your state. Here in the state of Mississippi, we do not have that. Um, we do rec league, which is pretty much just the city. Um, if we want to do soccer, baseball, football, but once they get to sixth grade, they max out on the city league. Um, but my children both right now are currently involved in Taekwondo. Bailey's a third degree black belt. Becca just got her green belt. So we have done soccer, gymnastics, and now karate or taekwondo. So I know there are lots of homeschool co-ops that offer um, music classes, um, anything like that. Uh, Cause I know some schools provide band and singing and choir and things like that. But as a homeschooler, we don't always have all those options but there are lots of homeschool co-ops, um, or you can just pay for the extracurricular activities that way. So it just depends on your state and your homeschool state laws, but believe me, there are so many extracurricular activities out there. We do field trips with our homeschool group. We do science experiments. We do all kinds of fun things with them. So if extracurricular activities are a problem, just check into what you would normally do after school um, if that's something that your children are interested in. I hope these 10 questions and answers have given you the information that you need if you are considering homeschooling or if you are new to homeschooling or a beginner homeschooler. Drop me a question down in the comments below. I am here to answer any question that you have. If I don't know the answer to that question, I will be more than happy to collaborate with some of my other homeschool mamas and reach out to them and ask them um, and give you some feedback on that question. So that is why I started my YouTube channel. That is why I started my blog. I wanted to support and encourage new homeschooling mamas, mamas that have been homeschooling, that just need that support because as a homeschooling mom, you're gonna learn that you cannot do it on your own. Um, you need the support of your husband, your spouse, you need the support of other parents that have been there and done that. 
So it really does take a community. So as always, remember to be kind, be careful, be considerate, and have a great day. Bye.